some variations. Function-based indexes. Uh, would you pause, John? Sure. So there were uh, some questions on um, how often to schedule index maintenance. And you know, my best answer that I could come up with is if you want to schedule index maintenance job, schedule the frequency, weekly, monthly, nightly, when or just before you prove that performance is degrading. So if you realize that it's you know, once a week, performance starts to degrade because of an index, well, just do it every six days. But very importantly, and I, I, really, I really need you to listen to me on this, use coalesce, do not use rebuild. Rebuild is a terrible thing that you can do to your, that you, rebuild is a terrible thing to do to your indexes. Okay, I'm not sure we have the time to talk in great detail about that today. We talk about it in great detail in the SQL tuning class. Um, we'll see, okay. Um, before we move on from variations on the B-tree index, are there questions that you guys have on B-tree indexes? Um, and uh, questions on B-tree indexes. There's a lot more to learn, but uh, we do have some limited time here. Uh, so we're, we're, we're compressed on what we can discuss. Okay, no questions on B-trees. So John is going to uh, get into different types of indexes like function base and descending keys and reverse key indexes. Okay, back to you, John. Okay, I'm actually going to take what you put there, Dave, and make it and emphasize even more. Now, how frequently should you rebuild an index? A reasonable answer is never. I'm going to be stronger than you were, Dave. Um, rebuilding indexes can seriously degrade performance. It can seriously degrade it. You've got to think of the block splits. If you rebuild an index, you're getting a new index structure, a new tree, and every block is full. The index is compacted. All those leaf nodes are full. That means that for some considerable time, every insert you do is likely to trigger a block split. And performance will degrade until there have been enough inserts, enough block splits for the index to stabilize. That's why it's not a good thing to do, or one reason why it's not a good thing to do. Okay, so Trust Oracle, you know, from release nine, release 10, release 11, the maintenance of indexes has become so much more efficient. You don't get wasted space. You don't get increased levels unnecessarily. You know, the algorithms have been huge hugely. And to rebuild indexes on a regular basis, unless you've proved it needs it, it's dreadfully 20th century. John, okay, uh, there is a question in the queue that I can't answer. Um, it, I heard it. I heard that if a key was more than 32 bytes, I guess, then Oracle uses only the first 32 bytes to create the index. There are some limitations on those lines. I don't, off the top of my head, have the figures for recent releases. So I'm going to have to leave that and say, I can't give you a definitive answer for recent releases. But yes, there is something on those lines that there is an, a, an effective limit on the length of the key that's used, no matter what you request. So, some variations. Function-based indexes. And I said, where well, ename equals king. But, of course, if I say maybe case sensitivity comes into it, and once my programmer starts saying where upper ename equals king, full table scan. So then we need, if we want to make this an indexable access, to have an indexable access path for that query. Do you see what I mean? You've got to understand your queries. You've got to understand your data. We would need a function-based index. So I shall create index name FBI on emp on emp upper ename, a function-based index. Now run that query. 
it's indexable. What's actually happened? Well, if I describe emp, there's no change, it's just the normal columns. But that isn't actually the truth. Now, this is Oracle not telling us the whole truth at this point. And if I were to select, say, column name, and I'll take data default, if it's got a default value, and is it a hidden column? Is it a virtual column from user tab calls where table name equals emp? Oops. Oh my gosh, emp, that's better. <laughs> right. Virtual column. So my typing is terrible at the moment. Virtual column. Set the auto trace off and run that query again. That's interesting, isn't it? So when I describe AMP, all I see is the columns that are publicly available that we can project through SQL. But if I look at the internals and go to the data dictionary, in this case, user tab calls, there's a new column being added. System generated name, default value, Upper rename. Well, I never. Isn't that exactly what I had in my index creation statement? So what Oracle does with a function-based index is it creates a hidden virtual column. That hidden virtual column is calculated with the function, and that is what the index is built on. So that's just reverse engineering how function-based indexes work. They're built on implicitly created hidden virtual column. There is an issue with them that usually, to make them usable, your programmer has to know they're there, and that's the problem. You know, your end user has to know, and in most circumstances, your end user will have to use the function in his predicate that was used to build the indexes. There are exceptions, yeah, but that is the drawback. The programmer needs to know they're there. More variations, you can have descending indexes. This is no big deal, really. You know, if you think of the doubly linked list for the leaf nodes, you can navigate up or down. Yeah, there's nothing special about a descending index. Reverse key is an interesting one. Very interesting one indeed. Think of the situation where you have an index based on a monotonically increasing key. Maybe you've got a primary key generated from a sequence. And your end users are hammering rows into that table. They're continually selecting from the index, for, sorry, from the sequence to get a new key value. All those inserts will be going into the bottom right leaf node of the index. There will never be a row lock because each user is inserting a different value. There'll be no row lock, but all those inserts of keys are going to the same bottom right edge node of the index. That's going to be terrible for block contention. This is beneath the application level. Do any of you remember weight events, buffer busy weights, and the like, or in a rack, global cache buffer busy? These are weight events as sessions hang, trying to hit the same block concurrently. Very bad for insert intensive systems. That's where reverse key comes in. All I do is alter index, pkm, pkm, rebuild, reverse. Well, I said don't rebuild indexes unless you've got a proven reason to. Well, this would be because I've demonstrated that all my sessions are queuing up or hanging. Well, they're not queuing, they're hanging, trying to insert consecutive values. Rebuild the index is reversed. That means 7839 is index is 9387, and so on. You simply reverse the keys as you index them. The effect of that is that numerically consecutive values will be distributed across the whole range of the index. Think of nine or say, what would be a suitable example? Perhaps 29, 30, 31. Those would be indexed as 92, three, and 13. So even though they're consecutive values, they're going to go in totally different parts of the index. That solves a raft of performance problems. There is, however, an issue. There is an issue. This query set 
also trace on explain this query oh it's gone for that index <laughs> oracle favors composite indexes above non-composite indexes i'll just drop that one drop index id name right so that search there use the index that i've rebuilt as reverse that was all i did rebuild reverse the problem comes if i do something like this a non-equality predicate or maybe a between predicate any non-equality predicate that now has to do a table scan because when you reverse the keys you're breaking the relationship between the values which is deliberate but you need to be aware what are your programmers doing with that data how are they accessing it so john a point to the uh previous slide for a minute so uh the descending key index um Notice that uh, John has multiple keys in there, Depno and Sowery. Depno is in the default ascending, and Sowery is in the descending sequence. Descending uh, key indexes required when SQL has multiple columns and in various sequences, like John has in the index. If you just said uh, you know, give give me give me uh, the rows in a table uh, by by key, sort them by key, uh, primary key, and give me it in descending index. Oracle can support that without a descending index. It just traverses the index backwards. That's why John pointed out that there were those backward keys. So only when you have multiple keys in multiple sequences. Okay, any questions on the variations? Function-based indexes, wasn't that cool? The hidden virtual column, or descending keys, or reverse key indexes. Any questions there? Okay, I got a question for you. What, for, what version of Oracle came up with the uh, notion of virtual and hidden columns? What release of Oracle came up with virtual and hidden columns. Good, thanks for your answers. I'm not giving up yet. Only three people have answered out of the 30,000 that have attended this webinar. <laughs> Only three guesses? Come on, that's, that's pathetic. Three guesses? No, 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 no. Wake up, people. You're in some training. Respond. What, for, what release of Oracle came up with hidden and virtual columns? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Thank you. Thank you. John, give me the answer, please. You're all right, and you're all wrong. <laughs> Hidden and virtual columns have been around for many releases, but we have only been given access to them officially in release 11. But they've actually been around for quite a long time. Um, Function-based indexes have always used them, and they've been available since, was it release 9 offhand? Um, Oracle Label Security has used hidden columns which are not virtual for quite a few releases. So you're all right and you're all wrong. Yes, they've been publicly available to us in release 11. You can do a lot more with them in release 12. For instance, in release 12, you can partition on a virtual column, which I think was not possible in 11. So they've been around for a long time. We've only had access to them in 11 and 12. They can be really, really useful 